libraries are basically collections of program code. And um, libraries and extendable modules exist because, well, um, programmers are lazy. Well, not lazy, um, I, I, I would say more, more smart than la lazy. We don't want to keep reinventing the wheel. So once we have solved some, some problem, then uh, it makes sense to reuse the, the code that was used to solve the, that, that problem and just uh, reuse it la later again. So it turns out there are a lot of these uh, standard Pro, uh, problems in programming where we can use um, standard uh, solutions for them as well. So libraries here come, come in, in hand. So there's a few different types of libraries. First of all, in the Python programming language, there are a lot of uh, libraries which are built in to the programming language and then we can also extend the, the Python programming language by downloading and installing more libraries. So uh, there is an e probably an infinite number of different libraries that we could use. And this is all just to get some uh, extra functionality into our code to make our life as the programmer a little bit easier. So libraries do contain some, some code implementations, some ready-made functions that you can use for many standard problems. And uh, basically we the idea is that we share these solutions to these th standard problems uh, online or we even even put them uh, together, we bundle them with the with the programming language so that everyone working with this programming language can can use them. So without further uh, explanation, let's just uh, look at an example of how this might work in practice. So uh, if I bring up uh, our editor right here. So basically uh, a simple library that I'm going to demonstrate uh, just first, this is going to be the first example, is uh, the uh, calendar module. The calendar module pretty much says, uh, does what it says on the tin. It um, brings some, some functions that you can use uh, to display uh, data from a calendar. So weekdays, months, years, that sort of thing. So to bring or to um, take take a uh, take a library into use, we use this uh, special keyword import, and uh, these uh, import statements uh, are located in the in, uh, at the top of the program code because they should be the first first thing to execute. And basically we just say import and then some library name. So in this case, import calendar to import the, the calendar module for, for our code to use. And basically that's it. That's the most, most uh, difficult thing in this uh, when, when it comes to using uh, libraries. Uh, well, it's not exactly the most difficult thing uh, to, to know. Uh, the most difficult thing is actually what comes next, uh, which is we have to know how to use this, this calendar module or any outside library. So um, I will come back a bit later to how do we know how to use it and where to find the manuals for now. Uh, that I happen to know how to use this, this calendar module so what I'm going to do with it is um, I am going to use this this function called month, which comes from the this this calendar module calendar library. And basically what it does, it contains um, the cal calendar data from from uh, for a specified month from some specified year. And how it works is I have to specify a year, let's say it's 2020, like it is now, and let's say we want uh, the calendar for November. 
And that's basically how we retrieve data from this calendar module. Notice I'm also using a uh, variable here, here called month where I'm storing whatever, whatever this, this um, uh, function call returns us. So whatever data we fetch from this calendar module, it's stored into this month variable. And at the end, I should probably do something with this data. So what I'm going to do is simply just print uh, the data that I just retrieved. And uh, if I did this correctly, it should work and it should uh, now print the calendar for uh, November 2020. That is uh, this month of, of the year. And as you can see, it uh, more or less sort of works. So we have the calendar for November 2020. Uh, all of this, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines eight lines printed here in the console, but in, in reality we only used three uh, lines of code to, to pull this off. So this is more or less why it makes sense uh, to use these, these ready-made uh, library modules. There is a lot of functionality that exists in those libraries. They are ready for us to use, so it just um, makes our life a little bit easier. So if we had to print this, this calendar, calendar data uh, on our own, uh, it would probably take a, a lot more code than just three lines, but here we can just do this very simply with this like three lines of code and actually in here it's just uh, these two lines of code are actually something that has to do with printing the calendar. Uh, the import statement is just to bring this, this library into use. So how does this actually work? So as shown, the import command or import keyword here is um, used to well import this this uh, library into our code um, and then after we have done this import we can start using some of the functions that are provided by this library in this case we use this function called month which um, I, we, we know it works because i just said it, it does i know this from previous experience so if I did not have previous experience, how would I know which functions this, this uh, calendar module has or even uh, where to look for these, these uh, libraries and, and modules? Well, the answer to that is basically it's in uh, the Python manual. So the documentation for all of these built-in libraries happens uh, to be located on the Python website. Uh, you can usually find this um, either directly from the website or doing a quick Google search for some particular Python library. And uh, knowing where to look for, for documentation is probably the most important skill that a programmer has because there's a lot of these ready-made functions that exist. It's just we have to know how to, how to find them. So for example, if I open this link, which leads us directly to this uh, documentation for the calendar module, we can see this from the official Python, Python uh, website. Um, all of the necessary information that you need in order to use this, this um, calendar library module. So it says this, uh, it has a brief description of what this uh, module does, and then it simply starts listing all of the contents that that module has. So for example, it has um, these, uh, these uh, fun functions built in. Usually these libraries have a, have a fair bit of stuff built in. So if I keep scrolling, you can see there is actually quite a lot of different uh, functions built in. So there is a lot to digest just from, from reading this documentation. Um, but more, uh, more on this uh, in a bit more detail uh, later on. But that's basically where, where all of the manuals are, are located. Um, something else about um, how to use these, these libraries, um, this uh, having to do with, with program code once again. So notice in here, 
I pull up the later pointer here, uh, or actually if I highlight this line that I want to stress right here. So we're calling this this function called month by using both the library's name and the function's name. So we're using this dot notation that we saw a, few, uh, a week uh, or, or two ago. Um, the same way, for example, how lists use this, this dot notation to access the uh, append and remove uh, functions. Well, uh, here the same notation is used to denote the functions inside some library module. And this has to do with the scope uh, and namespace of these variable names. So everything outside of our own program code is not accessible just by using some, some function name or variable name. Uh, what we have to do is we have to specify uh, where or which module, which library uh, has that particular va uh, variable or function um, before we can use it. And there is a very good reason for this naming convention. Uh, one of them is, as, as we just saw from this documentation page, there is a lot of different names, different functions inside that, that calendar library. So uh, it makes sense to package all of these uh, calendar related names uh, underneath this, this uh, uh, calendar name. So using this dot notation basic, basically allows us to use variable names such, for example, such as month, um, without worrying that we might be accidentally referencing something that's already uh, in this in this calendar module. So as you can see here, both this this variable name that I used month here and also this uh, function name uh, calendar dot month, they are both called month but uh, they do they mean different things because one of them is a function and the other one is is a variable name where we're storing data so this is why well, um, the name that that's in our local namespace in our main program that's uh, just called month and the function that we retrieve data from is called calendar dot month so it's this uh, dot notation is to uh, it is in order to try to avoid any ambiguity as to what we might, might mean. So basically, because just one of those names is, is, is in the main program, the other one is the, in, the, in the library, then there is no confusion, uh, no confusion either for the programmer or and no confusion also for the Python interpreter, because the interpreter needs to know what it is that the programmer meant. It uh, commands in the in the programming language cannot be ambiguous. Uh, sometimes, and actually oftentimes, this is not the convention that we use to uh, import libraries. Um, what we actually might use is a uh, another notation or another way of doing the same thing, which is um, instead of just saying import module, we might say from module import name. Um, this is because using the uh, import command as shown previously, such as like import module name, this will always import everything from the library. Every single function, every single piece of data, every single variable that exists in that library. And sometimes there are situations where this can be inconvenient or, or wasteful. So again, remember back to the page of documentation for the library module or, or, or for this calendar module. Um, every time you use the import command to bring uh, this, this library into use, you are bringing every single little detail described there on the, on the documentation page uh, to your program. And if you're only using 
one function or one little variable, it probably doesn't make sense to bring everything in. So in that sense, it can be a little uh, wasteful. So that's why there exists uh, other ways of doing the same thing. And actually the, what these other ways uh, aim, to, aim to achieve is to be a little less wasteful or a little less inconvenient. So first of all, maybe sometimes we're just lazy. We don't want to specify the library name. So for example, um, each time we had have have to reference this this uh, function from the calendar module, what we have to do is type out a uh, calendar calendar uh, dot month for that for that um, month function, and um, this we have to do every single time we we reference this this one function, and um, the longer your your uh, module name is the more inconvenient this becomes. Okay, you might just say this is this is uh, new levels of being lazy, but as um, we concluded in the beginning, programmers tend to be a little lazy. So even uh, this extra typing is sometimes inconvenient for the programmer. And also, what if this this uh, module name was really long, then it would be really inconvenient to type it out every single time. And what if you misspell it one once or twice? So maybe you don't want to specify the library name each time. Or maybe uh, you want to name this library differently. Again, uh, what if this uh, uh, calendar module, uh, what if you don't want to call that module calendar? Or what if the, the library module has a, an obscure name or a name that you, you're not really sure uh, what it means and you have to look it up constantly? So in that case, it in that case it might make sense to rename it somehow. Uh, or in that first example that uh, uh, I already discussed about. Um, what if we only need one li little function from a library? Uh, then we probably don't want to import the entire library. We just want to import that one single function from the library. So this is done using a, a syntax that uh, differs a little bit from this from this. Uh, from from the one in the previous example, but it's not too different. Uh, so what it does, it basically uses this from module uh, import name, and then it has an optional uh, op optional part that is used for renaming the uh, library module as well. And that can be done uh, like this. So if we go back to our example, if we want to do the same thing, but not import the entire library anymore, just bring uh, import this one one uh, function. What we do is we modify this uh, first line from saying import calendar to, to say uh, from calendar from calendar import. Uh, month. So basically what this means is instead of the entire library, we just want this one function from the from the uh, library. And um, this actually has a, a bit of a, a downside. Now if we're doing it like this, uh, it means um, we are also bringing this entire function uh, to the namespace of our local local program our local local code so that means we can't actually use this this variable na name anymore or well we can but we shouldn't uh, because um, we no longer have to use calendar dot month what we can do is is just to say a month and then specify what month it is and and this will do the right thing so uh, 
what I have to do is now I should rename this this data that I had this variable uh, to something else. Let's call it a uh, month calendar. Actually, let's not call it months. Let's call it uh, because it's the calendar for November. Let's call it uh, let's call it the calendar for November like that. Uh, this should work. It should work identically to the example uh, that we that we looked at first. So you can see still the calendar for ne November 2020, but the code looks a little different. So by using this uh, from calendar import month uh, syntax, uh, we no longer have to specify this this um, name calendar in front of this function call. Um, but at the same time, we can't use this name month anymore for our um, for our variable because this is reserved for this this particular function. So we had to change this this um, variable name that we used in in the beginning. Well, this of course is not a uh, not a big compromise, uh, just meaning we have one extra name that we cannot use, which is month, but on the other hand, we don't have to refer, refer to this this uh, function as calendar.month anymore. We can just refer to it as month. Uh, moving forward, uh, there is also a way using the same same style to import this function using another name. And uh, this also should work identically. So um, so let's say we want to import this this function month from this uh, module or library ca called calendar, but we want to give it another name. So then we say from calendar import month as um, something else. So let's call it uh, get get months calendar for for example. Not, I'm not sure how good of a variable name or how good of a name this this is, but uh, let's just live with it for now. Then we could say uh, again, like retrieve data from this from this uh, function call. So, but using uh, the same variable name month. So what we did was say get month calendar calendar and we specify November 2020 here. And once again at the end we can just uh, print whatever data we retrieved from the from this uh, function that came calendar library. As you can see it still works identically to the uh, previous two or three examples. Uh, there is also uh, one more way of importing things from a library, and um, this is not uh, to conf uh, well. It seems uh, it may seem like ev everything is so so very confusing, but I promise this is the last last way to do do this. So uh, similarly to our uh, uh, from module import import function name, we can also tell this same command to bring uh, to import every single function and every single variable from the library. And uh, this is done by saying uh, from module import uh, asterisk or from module import star. So this asterisk uh, is uh, Python's way of saying uh, we want everything. Let's look at how that would work. So again, we have to modify this code a little bit. So instead of saying from calendar import month, we could say from calendar import asterisk. And now what it means is um, don't import just one function, uh, import every single function and every single little piece of data in this calendar 
module. It works the same way as, as the plain uh, import calendar, but one, with one key difference, which is again, it will bring everything to the same namespace of our main program here, and we don't have to use the dot notation saying calendar dot month anymore. So what we can do here, we would simply, uh, I'm gonna take a shortcut here and just say uh, print uh, calendar dot month, and let's do November 2020 once again, like this. Mm. Oh yeah. So uh, as, as I was saying, um, we don't need to reference the reference the <laughs> functions in the calendar module by saying calendar dot. Uh, month, we can just say month and then put in November 2020 once again. As you can see, these, these uh, importing and function names can sometimes be a little little devious, so you might might get these naming conventions wrong by accident, like I did, like I did just now. So yeah, asterisk basically means um, import everything from this library. Uh, we have imported everything from this library into our program, so we don't need to use the library name to reference functions or names. So this is basically, basically again, the same functionality, just four different ways of uh, doing it. So now that we have looked at um, how to import these uh, built-in libraries uh, using this calendar library as an example, let's look at a couple of interesting uh, and potentially useful built-in libraries. And uh, now, I have selected a few because of the their uh, because they have interesting properties, uh, but as you can probably figure out, if there are that many different functions or or if there's that much content to just one single library like the calendar, uh, imagine how much content there is to all of the built-in libraries that exist in the language. So we couldn't possibly cover them all. Uh, Basically, we're going to be introducing new um, libra libraries uh, as we go along for the remainder of the course uh, when necessary, but it's not going to be possible to extensively go over all of these uh, library modules. So, but I'm going to demonstrate a couple of more things using uh, two example, example libraries at least. Uh, one of these more useful modules uh, that we might might play with uh, in the beginning uh, is the module for uh, mathematics functions. So there's a built-in module called math, which is a library that contains some mathematical operations. Um, if we look at these couple of examples, so Again, in order to use the math library, like we did previously with the calendar library, we need to first start by importing it into our program code. And then we can start using some of the functions or constants built into the uh, math library. So, oh, for example, um, there is a function for uh, determining uh, the value of, of Euler's constant, which usually in mathematics is denoted with a, with a, a lowercase e. If you don't know what Euler's number is, it's, uh, don't worry about it. It's a special number uh, which we usually call e, e short for Euler. Um, that's done by saying um, uh, math.exp. Dot, dot and um, 
this should give us a value of about um, 2.7. If you're curious as to how the uh, how Euler's number, uh, the number E, how it gets its value, you can probably look up the look up, look up a maths article on Wikipedia. Uh, for all no, for now, the important bit is that it's it's a number that uh, is roughly about 2.7. Uh, we could do the same with a uh, square, square root function. Uh, so, for example, the square root of square root of uh, four, which probably we uh, we know from experience should be two. Uh, that's done with with math dot uh, sqrt sqrt for square root. This should get us um, the square root of, of four, which is exactly two. We could do some um, we could do some geometric functions as well. So let's take the uh, approximate approximate value for uh, the sine function. So uh, sine at at point two, uh, specifically in in radius degrees, is uh, math dot dot sin. Hmm. Oh, there's a comma missing. There we are. And again, uh, what these numbers actually are, are if you if you're not that into mathematics, it, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, the more important takeaway here is that um, this math library contains some some functions, like we saw previously, the calendar uh, library that that had the a function called month. So these are all functions. We can we can see that uh, from well, they look like functions. It's a function name, and then we have the parentheses, and then we have to put some uh, parameter in the parentheses. Uh, there are also uh, also um, other types of data. Yeah, in, in terms of uh, data types, um, those are constant values. And for the math library, this is uh, easy to see because for mathematics, these constant values tend, tend to be numbers. A lot of mathematics has to do with numbers. And uh, it's important. This is important because of uh, the, the um, concept of having uh, both functions and uh, member variables that, that uh, libraries could have. So, for example, as an example, so 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 these all these all uh, are the ma uh, functions from the math library, and then the we also have uh, variables or uh, constant constant values uh, constant values from the math library. So these could be, for example, the, uh, the value of the of the number pi or the constant pi. That we can bring up just by saying uh, math dot pi and uh, notice that no parentheses at the end. This is because this is not a function. This is just a variable name. And if I uh, calc if I uh, if I run this right now, we should see that pi is approximately uh, 3.14. As you can see here. There are some other constants uh, such as uh, infinity in the math library. Uh, this makes sense in some, some, some uh, mathematical uh, 
they but they, this has some uses in in mathematics so uh let's say lo let's look at how much infinity is so infinity is approximately uh math dot inf and if we look at the actual uh, value, we see uh, infinity is approximately uh, infinite. Uh, well, if you can call infinity a constant. Anyway, the point of all this, um, you can see the constant values here. They look like variables because that's what they are. No parentheses at the end, so this is not a function. Whereas these functions, uh, which need some, some parameter, uh, then there are the parentheses here and uh, it looks like a function. So we have these different different types of uh, things that we could import from the from the library. Uh, then a bit about a word about um, so how do I know all of this? How where where do I find the manual for all of these individual little things that exist in some library? Well, again, the uh, official answer and the official documentation uh, is on the Python website. So, for example, the documentation for uh, this math library is located here uh, behind this link. Uh, for example, if I open up this, this uh, page right here, so we have this math, mathematical functions, page here and if I uh, jump to the uh, last section here on the page uh, which specifies all of these content constant values such as uh, such as pi or such as in infinity that we just looked at there are also other constants uh, there is the mathematical con cons constant for the Euler's number right here uh, there is a uh, tau, which is basically two times pi. There is the infinity. There is uh, also something called not a number, uh, which, if you are if you have ever done any any web programming with JavaScript, you probably know know what not a number is. So that's for the individual mathematics library. The entire index of libraries and uh, is uh, behind this link. And uh, this again is just a standard library with no external additions. And we should find that this is already quite extensive. So if we look at um, this page, which um, specifies the Python standard library, uh, this is the uh, official documentation for everything you could possibly ever import. Um, it says here that while the Python language reference describes the exact syntax and semantics of the Python language, this library reference manual describes the standard library which comes with Python. So it, so it uh, describes all of these functions that you could uh, import from different libraries. And uh, if we start scrolling down to look at stuff, there is uh, different libraries for, for example, text processing. So there is a library called string. Uh, there is a library called text wrap and read line. There are different data types for, uh, for example, date time or uh, the cal calendar data. There are some numeric and mathematical modules, uh, math among others. So there are other numeric and mathematical modules in addition to math. math. Uh, there's something having to do with file and directory access. So if you ever have to program any utilities for you to use for for your operating system, such as uh, you know saving files or copying copying files, making backups, anything uh, anything in that area, then you might use file and directory access libraries, which there is a handful. Uh, there is uh, a bunch of different different uh, libraries, and uh, it seems that this page is never ending. There is a uh, 
internet protocols and support, so web browsers, um, URL handling modu modules, HTTP modules. Uh, somewhere around here should be an email client. Graphical user inter interfaces, this is the topic for, for uh, lesson 12, if I'm not mistaken. And a bunch of other interesting interesting uh, language features. So again, this is way too extensive for us to go through in detail, but uh, just for further further reference, uh, this is where all of the built-in features and libraries is, is, is located. So there is quite a lot of functionality built into the Python programming language already. So that's the website, and again, nobody expects any anyone to uh, memorize all of that. That's why there is the documentation on the web page. There is another way of accessing this same documentation. Uh, so in addition to this web page, there is also the same documentation built in to the to your uh, programming tools. So there is also the same documentation built in to the Python interpreter. Uh, you can access this same manual from for uh, from um, basically going to your editor or interpreter and going to the help menu and clicking on uh, Python docs or just pressing F1 on the keyboard. And this will open uh, basically pretty much the same uh, documentation that exists on the web page. In addition to this, there is a special function built into the uh, interpreter called help. And how this works is basically, uh, well, this is probably best just to demonstrate. So if we go to the interpreter here, uh, let me bring this window a bit up. So if we go here and type in help, and then in parentheses and in, in quotation marks, the name of some function or module. So if we go to, for example, uh, what did we have there? Uh, there we are. For example, math.exp. Uh, it will give us a explanation for what, what this uh, function or module that we just specified is for. So in this case, it tells uh, this is the uh, built in documentation for e exp and exp is a function that returns you uh, the number e raised to the power of, of x and x is a parameter. Similarly, we could um, look at the help section for the entire math module math here we are uh, this is actually rather long as you could see from the from the documentation pages in the web browser so it uh, usually does not show show this at first you can double click on this squeezed text and then it will actually uh, unwrap all of this this detail so you can see uh, this there is basically a short description and then we start with a long list of different different functions different uh, different functions and different variables that you could uh, use from this library so for example on this line of this documentation we can see the sign function here that we already used in the example at the very end there are there's a listing of all the constants in this library which we already see, saw a few. So there was uh, the the pi, the uh, in, in infinity, and also Euler's constant here. So all of this documentation is available here in the uh, in your programming environment. It's just a matter of knowing what to look for. Okay, continuing on to another maybe useful module. Mm. There is a library 
that implements uh, that's called random that implements uh, some pseudo random number generators for various various purposes and various distributions. Again, we don't need to go very detailed uh, in, in very much detail about how this works and or what pseudo number random generators even are. It's basically a collection of different functions for producing different sorts of random numbers and num random number ranges for and some some uh, applications of them so maybe to demonstrate this a little bit uh, maybe let's just do a couple of code examples of this uh, random library so once again we start with just importing this this library so we import the random library this. Uh, the first thing uh, to demonstrate, uh, let's look at a random choice. Let's say we had some list of, of things. Um, let's list different fruits. So I'm going to make a list of um, different objects. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if banana is a fruit, but uh, never mind that. So if I wanted to, actually, let's make a, a list of four, four things. Um, so if I wanted now to choose one of these list items uh, at random, I can use a special uh, special function from this random module called choice. So I'm going to select a random fruit, which is going to be uh, random dot choice uh, from these uh, from this collection of fruits. And then to see what what this random fruit fruit was just uh, we need to print something so. So like that, we run this. Uh, fruit is not defined. Oh yes, because we need to specify their fruits with a with an S at the end. Okay, let's try this again. So on this occasion, our random fruit is an apple. If we run it again, there is a good chance uh, that we end up with something else. OK, here we here we are. So. With chance, we got three times out, out of four, we got an apple, but then finally uh, an orange at the end. Let's see how many times. We might get them. Um, so this is a seemingly random choice of, of those four things, and obviously the more things we have, the more random this selection will will appear. So that's a random choice. Uh, let's do um, a random collection of numbers next. And um, I'm going to be a bit lazy in, in, in this one. I'm just going to say print and uh, random dot sample. And uh, what random sample needs is a um, range of some numbers. So let's say we want uh, numbers from 0 to 100. And um, we want to spec we want to pick 10 from these. Uh, from these numbers, so it's from between numbers between uh, zero and one hundred. Uh, choose ten at random. Let's see what random what numbers we end up with. Uh, those ten no numbers 
if we run this again, we end up with, with different numbers. So you can see this might be used in, in um, calculating some random uh, lottery numbers, for instance. OK, so that's a uh, collection of random num uh, collections of random numbers like that. Uh, let's uh, pick a random number between uh, 1 to 10, for in instance, or let's do it, uh, yeah, let's do it from between 1 to 10. So that would be done with uh, A random number would be uh, random dot random dot uh, rand int. So it's a random integer that this this uh, function provides us with. And then we need it between one and uh, ten. And again, in Python, for for reasons, uh, for some reason, the uh, first number that we specify between a range is always included, the second number is always ex excluded. So this works the same way as, as um, with, with range. So uh, z range between 0 and 100 actually gets you numbers from 0 to 99. So this works similarly, it gives you numbers from 1 to 10. And let's just print out our random number. our random number. Let's call it lucky number this time. Our lucky number is random number. Here we are. So we got one at first. Let's see, does it produce different Here we are, and also, um, also um, in my explanation previously about the ranges, I seem to have been wrong. Let's say what the um, because we got eleven, that means also the also the latter number is included in the range. Let's see what this what this help function says for random dot rand random integer. Uh, returns a random integer in the range between A and B, including both endpoints. Okay, that's a bit distracting because for for me as a Python programmer, I presume that the randint function would just uh, exclude the endpoints, but um, I seem to have, but I, it, it seems I was wrong. Well, good thing we have this help function to explain things out. Well, anyway, uh, one more interesting function in this in this um, random library. Let's uh, comment this out. Uh, so there actually happens to be a function uh, in the random library called random. So it's random dot random. Let's look at what this gives us because um, oftentimes this is what you what um, a person who doesn't know how the random library works uh, would think is, is for producing random integer numbers, but it turns out this is this is not the case. So in this case the random number is So random random actually gives us random numbers between zero and one. So we're getting a floating point numbers, decimal numbers. Random floating point numbers between one and uh, between zero and one, but uh, floating point decimal numbers in any case. 
So this uh, is for random dot random for generating random numbers uh, might not do what you expect it to do on the uh, based on the description. It does produce random numbers, but just uh, floating point numbers. Okay. Uh, another rather useful module, something that um, may, be, may be of use because we often need to download data of the internet. So for that, there's a library called urllib. This is a bit more complex library, so uh, I have selected an example that's not that 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 should that aims to be really simplistic, but um, it it may be that this in in practice is is a bit more complicated. So uh, this is left more or less to the listener as a as a practice to do at home. But just uh, a brief word on how to download uh, web pages using using Python program code. So URL will let you retrieve content from the internet, and basically what we just do is we download uh, a web page and then we display its content. Uh, the problem with this, however, is because um, web pages are coded as well. They are coded uh, using a language called HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. That's the coding language for building web pages. So it may be that the, the so when you retrieve a web page using using uh, code, then uh, the resulting web page is also coded. So it may be a li little hard to read. So for that reason, I have selected a web page that's uh, more or less uh, easy to read, something that doesn't contain a lot of lot of links or Im images or uh, styling. Uh, so the web page I have I have selected is uh, the info page of of CERN, the European uh, Science Science Institute. Institute. So info.cern.ch. Uh, this is basically what the website looks like. And um, you will see very, very quickly why this is um, what I have selected as the, as the web page that we're going to, be going to be downloading in our code example. Also, this uh, happens to be one of the first websites in the world ever. So back in the day when internet was its, in its infancy, uh, there were no web pages. This is one, one of the pioneers and it has stayed uh, like this for uh, basically museum purposes. Uh, anyway, so how to retrieve a web page? So for that we need the URL lib uh, library. And specifically, this URL lib um, library is, is a bit more complex. It has uh, many parts into it. So specifically, the bit that we need is called URL lib.request. The web page that we want to load um, is then going to be uh, URL lib.request.request url open and then we specify as a parameter the web page, uh, this the uh, address of that web page so it's, it's info.cern.ch now <clears throat> this will open the web page uh, no problem it doesn't actually load its content yet so we have to load the content separately uh, that's going to be web page. So we have this uh, data from the web page, and then we're going to say a web page dot read. So this is a bit like uh, the file variables, the file handle variables we had uh, in, in the previous week. So we have to read the web web page much like we have to read a file. So it turns out web pages are are pretty much files as well. 
we read the content of the web page and uh, much like files uh, we also need to close this this web page or we need to close the, the file um, after we are done with with reading then we need to do a, a little trick to uh, get the content from that web page into into text form uh, we will come back to what the de encoding and decoding is uh, next week. So now you can just uh, ignore this line. But basically, what we do is we uh, transfer uh, transfer this or transform this text from this web page into a uh, readable form. So what we do, we say, we say in technical terms that we are parsing the content of the web page. And the specifics as to why we're doing this, this is the topic for, for uh, uh, the, the next lesson, so don't worry about this yet. And now that we have finally retrieved the text from our web page, we can uh, we can print it to the screen. So we have text and then we print it. So uh, let's see if this worked. Uh, OK, I misspelled something. That's uh, the, the code need not decom. OK, let's try once again. Here we are. So on the left, the original web page here and on the right in this interpreter window you can see the actual encoded HTML website like this so you can see there's a lot of HTML code that's because that's how web pages are constructed so don't worry about them uh, but you can see uh, for example this uh, header here home of the first website uh, from here you can that's the text right here and then there are a couple of links to different pages right here. And we can basically just look at the uh, deconstructed version of this of this web page. And this is why we needed a fairly simple web page to download because we uh, Right now, we don't have the time to go in, into the de de deeper into how to uh, remove all of these all of this HTML formatting. Again, this is uh, left as an exercise to the to the li listener right now because that's a bit outside the the scope of our course. But this is just an example of how to download data of the web. Okay. Uh, so this is maybe an example that we're not ready, ready to use uh, right now, but uh, what could we do even, even, even right now? What would be uh, really cool? So if we move on to bigger software projects, so bigger coding projects, then eventually we will have to do some housekeeping with our code base. So we might have the need to compartmentalize our code a little bit. And it turns out libraries can be the solution for that sort of housekeeping. So if we wanted, we could make uh, library modules of our own. And uh, this is particularly uh, useful because it's very easy to make a library module. So basically all you have to do is um, save code in a, in a Python file and then we can just import it uh, in within another uh, code file. So as an example, uh, let's create a module uh, that um, has some built-in functions uh, to print some greetings in, in, in different languages. So if we do this uh, from scratch, go right here and um, just going to comment this out right here here we are so in order to make a uh, library module of our own we need a uh, 
code file that contains the built-in functions that we want to use later on. So let's say we have a library for uh, printing uh, greeting messages. Uh, and that's done in, in different languages. And for now, let's say uh, we support uh, this library supports uh, English, English, Finnish, and uh, Spanish. Okay. So this is going to be now our library called uh, greetings. And this file is going to be greetings.py. Uh, okay, uh, so I need to save this file. I need to save it in the same uh, location where, where my other code files are. And I'm just gonna save this as uh, greetings. Uh, the interpreter will make this this file extension automatically, so it has turned to greetings.py. So let's uh, create a couple of functions. Uh, let's just name these after the languages that we have here. So for uh, for English, let's call let's just uh, call this function uh, eng or eng, and Let's not make this library do anything too complex. Let's just uh, do what it, what it says in the description, uh, print a greeting message. So for English, that's probably going to be hello. Let's do the same for Finnish. And uh, let's just choose a fairly new, neutral uh, greeting in the form of, of terve. And um, the last language to support, uh, Spanish. Going to be uh, right there saying hola and i apologize to any spanish speaker right now i don't have the um in inverted uh exclamation mark on my keyboard right now so i can't type this properly i hope you will forgive me uh anyway this is a uh implementation of a library uh, it contains some some built-in functions and then we have no main code here that's because there is uh, this library is not intended to be used in as, as a main file so there's not going to be any main program code instead what we're going to do is move to the uh, move to another code file here again it needs to be in the same folder or well not always but then you would have to specify where that uh, library hap hap happens to be located. So let's just put all of our code files in the same folder for now. And in order to use this, this library that we just created, we need to know its name, which was greetings.py. So here we just say import greetings. And if I have done this correctly, if I uh, run this code right, right now, it should not give me an error, okay? And since it did not give me an error, it actually means that this uh, this this library works. Now, of course, because there is no code in in here, it doesn't do anything. But I know it works because um, uh, there was no error in in importing this greetings library. So then we can use these um, built-in functions from the greetings library. So we say, for example, uh, greetings, uh, greetings um, dot uh, eng or greetings dot fin. And if I run this uh, run this code right now, we can see uh, we are using these built in this built-in functionality from this uh, greetings library
Um, so maybe in order to wrap things up and uh, to to um, make a little bit more complicated um, example of how how to use these uh, libraries, uh, uh, maybe how to use libraries um, in conjunction. Let's um, use this greetings library for something, but let's also use other libraries as well. So let's uh, create a, let's use the random uh, library as well. And let's create a program that will select a uh, greeting from this greetings library and um, use this this uh, random greeting. Uh, so let's just create a, a program that um, greets greets pe people using this this randomly selected greeting uh, greeting every few seconds or so. Uh, so and actually let's let's do it like so that there is a um, that the program. Uh, so let, actually, let's document this. So, uh, so th let's call this program. This is the uh, random greeter. So what it does is uh, select a random greeting from greetings. Uh, again, select and uh, and repeat every uh, let's say two seconds forever. So we build a piece of code that um, selects a random greeting from this greetings library and uh, then repeats this this uh, or does the same select a random greeting from greetings every two seconds and repeats this forever. Uh, so for that we need our greetings. We also need random. Uh, how to do repeat every two seconds? Um, well, we need a library that we haven't um, looked at before uh, called time. So what we could do here is um, Uh, we could um, take a list of all these different different uh, functions that are built into this greetings library. So we could take uh, have a list of um, the different greetings that we have. So. We have mm, so we have this uh, greeting from uh, this greeting in English. We have the greeting in Finnish, and we have the greeting greetings uh, greetings uh, e e uh, the greeting from greetings in uh, Spanish. So that's ESP. There we are. Those are the actual function names. Uh, notice this is now a little bit funny because we have only functions in this greetings library and we want to select from those functions. So what I'm doing in this list is I'm actually listing these different function names and we're going to select from these functions later on. Uh, this is something we haven't done before, but it doesn't. Um, it works the same way as, as selecting from different uh, values or different variables. This is perfectly legitimate in, in, to do in Python. Uh, then we want to do something, so we want to repeat. So let's create a uh, infinite loop. And the way to do something every some seconds in Python is uh, we can use a function called sleep, which is in the time library. And what that does, it um, basically just sleeps or waits every uh, X amount of seconds. And those X amount of seconds are given as a parameter to this function. So basically sleep to will just wait for, for two seconds at a time. Uh, so we do this, we sleep 
um, so we sleep uh, at the end of this of this loop. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to um, choose a random uh, greeting from from these. So our choice is going to be a uh, ran uh, random choice of these languages. And then what we need to do is we need to take that choice, which is going to be one of these functions. So we take choice and then we simply uh, call this the fu whatever function was chosen. And then we, we sleep for a few seconds. And again, if I have done this correctly, let's see, uh, languages. Um, yeah, let's hope I have done this correctly so it works. So, so now there's a gap of two seconds uh, while the program waits and then it, it produces a new random greeting from those those three options in the in the greetings uh, library. Yeah, so you can see we get a ra uh, seemingly random choice of, of uh, a new greeting on the on the bottom line here and uh, as this is a uh, while true loop so an infinite loop it will keep doing this until the end of time unless of course we we stop this program using uh, using using control C which is the if you remember that's the way to stop a runaway runaway program so there we are uh, a few a few libraries used together to create this random greeting uh, program, random greeting machine.